The device you see here is a laparoscopic training device. Considering the need for these devices at Tehran University of Medical Sciences and educational hospitals, this device was designed at this hospital. The device has a foreign model, and we drew inspiration from both domestic and foreign examples to create a new design. The main goal was to make this device as simple and cost-effective as possible. We even designed it to connect to our own equipment. Some devices have separate monitors and light sources. Since we had an older device that we used less frequently, we could utilize it for educational purposes. We designed the device to be compatible with this equipment. Of course, the device is adaptable. We can place a light source on it or provide a separate monitor. One important point in the construction of this device is that all the materials we used are sourced from Iran. The design of the device is very simple. For example, the torso you see is a mannequin we used. The trocars are readily available in the market and the washers and ports used are entirely our own design. The table you see, which is fixed to it, was completely made in Iran and was ordered by us. Almost all the details of this device were designed by my team and the construction was carried out by colleagues at the hospital. For some parts, we had to order from external companies. For instance, the table, which is a medical trolley, is fully adjustable in height. Other parts were typically items that were not heavily used in the hospital. For example, we used some items that were outdated or had passed their expiration date on the device, but we can still utilize it with various equipment. This device is used for educational purposes for surgeons, surgical residents, and specialists. In fact, we aim to intervene in these three groups. In the first part, we utilize personnel, meaning specialists who were interested in practicing laparoscopic movements. We use this device for them, connecting it to this monitor and our system. They perform movements such as repositioning certain components within the body cavity of this mannequin, which serves as practice. Sometimes surgeons test suturing techniques. For example, they can work with animal intestines as a practice model and train on suturing techniques. Additionally, we can use pre-made devices designed for these tasks, allowing us to place anything inside this mannequin for educational use. Medical students typically do not perform laparoscopic procedures. Usually, it starts with residents. Specialists, particularly operating room specialists, should have a basic understanding of laparoscopic movements. Surgeons who practice laparoscopic techniques work in various fields, including obstetrics, general surgery, specialized surgeries, and urology. The value of this simulator lies in the fact that it has been designed within the university system and we have thoroughly examined all the details of its design, including the dimensions that have been specified. Various books have been studied, and we have created it in a way that fully complies with global standards. One of its advantages is that it closely resembles the shape of a human body, although it cannot be said that it is identical. However, given our conditions and the practical precision we require, it is considered quite capable in its own right. Now, we are demonstrating a training exercise with the simulator. This simulator has four entry points for ports or trocars and one camera location, which we can move to any of these points depending on the location where we want to conduct the exercise. Typically, since the camera is positioned at the patient's navel, we have placed it here. Meanwhile, these ports and trocars can be rearranged. For example, one can move from here to another completely depending on where we want to conduct the training and what procedure we want to perform. Ms. Islami, a room expert, is helping me as a camera holder. For example, we have a very simple exercise that we want from the experts, which is to practice and be able to 
have a good spatial recognition in two-dimensional space and convert that two-dimensional spatial thinking into three-dimensional. For instance, they should perform this task by moving these small pieces. This is just a very small example of things that are available. Or for instance, we might have one here. Let's assume. Or we can place a doll to practice suturing. Or we can put paper and try to practice cutting with scissors. Overall, the purpose is that the simulator's environment is very open. Could you show the upper part? Or this closer? Rotate it to the left. For example, yes, there are different areas in the simulator. And it's nice that we can perform exercises here or lower down. It completely depends on how we want our working location to be arranged. To move the equipment inside the simulator, we can use this compartment where we place the training items. And from here, we will have complete access to them. In conclusion, I would like to extend special thanks to the hospital officials who truly collaborated and provided us with everything we needed during the time this simulator was being developed. I also want to thank the colleagues from the cancer treatment unit who helped us a lot, as well as my colleagues including Mr. Hosseini and others who were involved in various aspects of the simulator's design and worked step by step with us until it was completed. 